Hello, you're welcome to another exciting edition of this Bible study program. My name is Mr. Magbe Leslie Gariva, and I'm a gospel preacher in the Church of Christ. Today, I have with me again Brother Handy Soko, a gospel preacher in the church, a writer, and uh, he's also a publisher. Uh, he's very good with the uh, internet, and we are going to be discussing today uh, the subject of social media and evangelism, uh, you know, how we can use uh, the social media to do the work of God, evangelism, uh, if we can see if there's any uh, uh, way we can use these things. We know that a lot of people, some of them are averse to, you know, using the social media. Some people are so good with it and all of that. So we want our brother Handy to take us through this topic and see uh, if there is any way we can actually create a balance or use these things to propagate God's word. Um, Brother Handy, how are you doing today? Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year. It's good to talk to you again. Yeah, it's good to talk to you. This is actually my first video of the year, so <laughs> I'm excited. Thank you so much, and uh, I'm glad. Yeah, yeah, I hope you had a good um, time uh, enjoying yourself at the New Year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we did. All right, so we, we want to talk about social media and evangelism. Maybe we can have the internet as long as I uh, know the internet could be a kind of wider um uh, aspect of it not limited to social media so but um once to look at evangelism and social media uh how can we uh use the the internet the social media to propagate the gospel and particularly i've seen a lot of people uh who oppose the use of um social media for some personal reasons some persons have actually even told me to my face that oh uh, leslie you're just wasting your time on the internet or this is not evangelism and you know they 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 think that this is not evangelism so uh, i just want you to guide us through these questions and see if uh you know we can actually make good use of these things they might be sincere in the accusation we don't know but you know let's see uh sometimes people can be sincerely ignorant and sometimes they, they could be right so first of all what, what do we mean by social media Let, give us a background of that yeah when we're talking about social media what we're referring to are those online networks like we're familiar a lot a lot of us are familiar with facebook or instagram or twitter whether we use them or not we're familiar with those platforms that they allow us to communicate with one another with text posts or photos or videos and things like that and really what it does is that social media provides an avenue through which we can communicate with others digitally or through the internet whether it's people we know or people we don't know and uh, people around the world is the two of us we're talking today and we're in two different countries but we're able to communicate with one another because of social media or the internet you know in general with that form of communication now for those who who would say that we shouldn't use it or that it's not a good use of our time and i've had people talk to me about that as well, just as you described the conversation you had, where there were people that said that, you know, this isn't evangelism, isn't a good use of our time. So there's the question of whether social media is going to be good or bad. And one idea is that, well, it's neither good or bad, that it's just neutral, that it's just an avenue of communication. And so whether it's good or bad is going to depend on whether the user uses it for something that is good or bad. However, there's something that I didn't think about until just this past year that I think is is a good thing to consider. I was reading a, a book by an individual named Chris Martin. He wrote a book called Terms of Service, and he has a blog that is by the same name. And in it, he was arguing that social media is not a neutral tool, that it is inherently negative. And the reason why he argued this, and and I'm not, I don't know if I'm completely convinced of his argument, but he does make a compelling case that, that you have these social media companies, they exist to make money, that they're businesses, and so they're, they're there to make money. And the more people who use their platforms and the more time that people spend on those social media platforms, 
then the more money they make and the more profitable their business is going to be. And studies have shown, and he went through this in, in his book that he, that he talked about all of this, that studies have shown that statistically divisive content where people get angry and people argue and, and, and all of those sorts of things, which we've seen on social media, that keeps people on those platforms more than what we might consider as wholesome or good natured content. That's not going to be true for everyone, but generally and statistically speaking, that's often the case. And social media companies, they have an algorithm that determines what content is going to be seen more often than other content. So they want you to see the content that's just going to keep you on there the longest, which is oftentimes that negative divisive content. So there is a case to be made that these platforms are inherently negative. However, that does not mean that we should not use them. And, and that author, Chris Martin, he was not even arguing that we shouldn't ever use these platforms, but just to be aware that there are these negatives. So it is understandable when you have you know, even brethren who will say that, well, we shouldn't use social media or we shouldn't try to evangelize on it. There's a reason why they're making that argument. And I think a lot of them are sincere, as you mentioned, that, that, that they may be sincere in this. I think a lot of them are because there are legitimate concerns. Mm -hmm. But I believe that we still need to use it. And there still is a good way to use social media or the internet in general. We just need to be aware of the potential dangers of it, recognize that just the way that it's created, it's meant to be divisive. It's meant to be to get people angry at one another. And we have to be aware of that and make sure that number one, we are using it properly. And also recognize that as we share content on there or try to teach on there, that that is what people are accustomed to. Not that we feed into that, but that's just we need to understand that that's what we're up against. So there is a, a good way to use it, but we do need to be aware of how these mm -hmm. platforms are have been created and some of the challenges that exist because of that. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. While you were talk talking, um, I, I remember a post I read some time ago on um, Brother J.W. Hamilton's website, La Vista Church of Christ. As a matter of fact, I have an interview with him uh, this coming Friday. So, um, you know, someone sent him a question and the person was like opposing the use of the Internet. And it was like, oh, you know, it's not good. And um, Brother Hamilton actually asked him a question that. Is it not strange that you are actually communicating with me using the internet and then you are opposing uh, the internet? So sometimes I, I don't see how people can completely oppose the internet um, and then, you know, really uh, stay away from it, especially when you have your mobile phones and all of these things are actually at your fingertip in such a way that you can easily you know, have access to, you know, Wi-Fi and all of that and you communicate and, and stuff. I, I think in one of your articles that I read also, um, I think the title is Social Media uh, on your website, Plain Bible Teaching, you made a statement that social media is not, you know, bad or good in itself, but it depends on how, you know, it is being used by people, you know, People could use things positively and uh, negatively and, you know, all of these things. Uh, you know, that is one thing I think people should actually get, first of all, like to have an idea that some of our old brethren, you know, during their times, they never had Google. You know, some of them used um, the hard copy materials even till they died. They don't know what Google is. And, you know, they still think that, you know, when you are on your Internet now, most African parents think that their children waste time on the internet and all of that. So we will come to the advantages of that later uh, in the discussion. Thank you so much for that brief introduction and I appreciate it. Now, the next question I want to ask you is, um, if you have anything to say to what I've just said, you can um, then answer the question. Well, it, yeah, I'll just say one one thing really quick. Uh, you mentioned the article that I, that I have on, on the Plain Bible Teaching website where I've made the case that, that social media is, is not inherently good or bad, that the argument that I just presented that I read in that book was something that I read after writing that article. Mm -hmm. And so I think that 
And I think there are considerations that we need to make that, that I do think that is definitely, there are good things we can do with social media. And I do think that it is something that we should absolutely be using in order to spread the gospel. But I would maybe... I would maybe back off a little bit from that statement that I made just because of the that argument that I read in you know in that terms of service book that I that I'm not 100% you know in agreement with it yet but I but I think it's a compelling argument that I would that I do think we need to be cautious in our use of it not that we stop using it because it is absolutely something that is is going to be beneficial to us in the day and age that we live to spread the gospel but i do i do think we need to be aware of the potential pitfalls of it as we use it all right yeah right right that's that's making sense thank you so much for that all right so i wanted to give us a brief on this uh, introduction of a brief explanation rather on what evangelism entails you know in in africa maybe nigeria where i was born and bred uh, when we talk about evangelism, what comes to a lot of us minds or the minds of many of us is um, going from house to house, knocking on people's doors and then talking to them. Um, anything outside of this, you are wasting your time. And um, this is what we've been used to. Sometimes you can actually go to the public and then bring out a very big loudspeaker and then talk and then you can get people's attention by your preaching. Um, you know, but these are traditional, you know, com means of, you know, evangelism in this part of the world. Um, so maybe that was what gave rise to, uh, in fact, somebody actually told me one time that, <clears throat> you know, a preacher for that matter, you know, that all of these things I'm doing on YouTube is just a waste of time. Basically, no one listens to it. That's quite funny anyway. But uh, so I want you to tell us what is evangelism and what are the areas, you know, we can, you know, get people to talk to them with regards to evangelism. Yeah, when we talk about evangelism, you you mentioned, you know, a couple what I would call tactics for, you know, the way we can evangelize, whether it's going from house to house and knocking on doors, or you mentioned, you know, setting up in the street with a with a speaker and, you know, with a loudspeaker to try to get people's attention that way. Those are ways that we can evangelize. But evangelism itself, you know, the word the word for the gospel is the word euangelion, which is where we get the word evangelism. And it simply means when we're talking about evangelism, it's just about spreading the news of the gospel, the good news of the gospel. It's about making that available to others. So in its most simplest terms, whether we are teaching in a in the local church and to the people who are present, whether we're teaching on the street corner, whether we're going door to door, we're having a Bible study with someone one on one or in a in some setting like that, or if we are teaching online, all of that would constitute evangelism because we are spreading the gospel to those who need to hear. Because any any way that we are we are using to spread the gospel to make it available to those who who need to hear it, that's what evangelism is. And evangelism was the commission that was given to the apostles. When Jesus gave them the Great Commission, Mark 16, 15, to go into all the world and preach the gospel, that's evangelism. When the churches were spreading the gospel, the church in Thessalonica in 1 Thessalonians 1 and verse 8, it says they were sounding forth the word. That's evangelism. When the early church in Jerusalem in Acts chapter 8, when persecution arose after Stephen was killed, and the disciples there were scattered. They went everywhere preaching the word. That's evangelism. So when we think about evangelism, anything that we do that spreads the message of the gospel and makes it available to those who need to hear it, that's evangelism. We do it as local churches. We do it as individuals. But there may be different tactics that we use. We might go door knocking. We might stand on the street corner. We might do things like that. But those are tactics, but it all falls under the category of evangelism because we are working to spread the gospel. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. So there are various methods of tactics that can be used to, you know, spread the word. The aim is just get a message out to people and what should be preached is the gospel, not something else. You know, a lot of people, that, a lot of things rather that people replace with the gospel today, you know, in, in, a, in a way to get people, you know, gimmicks and all. 
Now, let's be specific on social media. Um, can social media be used in any way to actually spread the word? I know that if you look at the virtual community, another thing I actually enjoy in your article I referenced earlier is the fact that you made some very interesting statistics, um, you know, quite some time the census was carried out, but, you know, the, the statistics made sense. And um, talking about a lot of people that we have on the virtual community. So, so do you think that, you know, or let me say, how can social media be used to reach these people? Can we be effective in our reach on social media to people uh, in order to get them converted? Because I personally have known people who got converted through, um, you know, YouTube, listening to YouTube, like, like up to four, five, six individuals who gave their testimonies on how they were converted. So let's hear from you. Uh, yeah, when we, in the, the statistics that you were mentioning, or at least one that I remember from that article said that, you know, in the United States, there were almost 80% of the people were regular users of Facebook. And that's just one social media platform. That's not even all of them or just the internet in general. But you have people who are using it, and that's why we're we're talking about it. When we the last question that we that we talk with we discussed here, where we talked about what is evangelism, and the evangelism is about spreading the gospel. So we can ask the question: Can we spread the message of the gospel and make it available to those who need to hear it through social media, or we could expand it to the internet in general? And the answer to that is absolutely yes, we can do that. When we think about what we can do on social media, we can create posts or share posts that teach something about the Bible. We can invite people to Bible studies. We can, through private message, post or study with them in in those in, in that way where we can open up the Bible or we can invite them to Bible studies. We can invite them to worship services or to gospel bees or whatever whatever events that the, the church is hosting in order to teach people the gospel. We can create videos like this one here that encourage people to consider different Bible topics and what the scriptures have to say so they can learn it. Even though we're not sitting across the table with them, they can still learn from these videos like this just as if we were there teaching them. They can learn the scriptures that way. We can create Facebook pages for our local churches so that we can post content that shares the message of the gospel, We that also helps people discover the congregation, because people are using those platforms to search for things. If they're looking for a church in some place, a lot of times they're going to Facebook and look that way, or they may pull up Google and search that way. And if the church, if the local congregation where we are, if they're not, if they're not found on there, the, a lot of people just aren't going to realize that the church is there. And so it helps other people discover the church when they're looking for someone who's teaching the gospel or where they can learn more about the gospel. And also these forums provide us the opportunity to comment and ask questions about spiritual things to try to help direct people to the truth. So there are a lot of different ways that we can take advantage of social media to teach people the gospel. Now, for those who, who push back a little bit on this and, and say that we shouldn't use this, we're not saying that this is the only way that Christians should be spreading the gospel. But it is a way and it can be a very effective way. And it's something that we need to recognize and take advantage of while we have you know, this tool that's available to us, take advantage of it so that we can try to reach people that we would not otherwise be able to reach. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, that makes a lot of sense. So, uh, you know, it is a fact that there are people on the virtual, virtual community and it is true that we can actually reach them with the gospel. I, I want to share a story. I actually have a lot of stories to share on this because I've actually discussed with people and uh, prior to this time, I'm not a very good social media user in the real sense of the word. I, I don't do YouTube. I don't do all of this online writing and stuff like that. But, you know, when I begin to interact with people and I see some of them got converted through, uh, um, you know, uh, 
watching or reading something online and they became Christians. And, you know, I see that we are actually having a lot. Now in Ghana, I recently met some friends who are actually active on social, social media, members of the Church of Christ, and they preach. And when I get to seeing what they are doing, in fact, I realize that, oh, some of us here, I mean, in Nigeria, we are still very, very far behind. So we, I think we need to now begin to see how we can use the internet and social media to propagate the gospel rather than trying to condemn and prevent people from using it. And I like your statement that we are not saying this is the only medium to be used. We, we are not saying that, but it is an avenue, you know, uh, you know, that you can use to spread the gospel. One time, I think in 2021 or, or 2020, a sister just came into our congregation, our building on a Sunday from, from the U.S. You know, she, 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 she came in with her husband and um, she's an American. She lives in California. Sister Kelly, I'm going to send her this video. So I, I believe she would watch. So, you know, I, after the, 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 the church service, I was asked to, to talk with them and then we and I started talking about wow, how did you find us how did you how are you able to get that and then they were able to let us know that you know they just put up the name and the location where they are on google and they were able to locate you know the congregation that's one good use you know of the internet without that you can't get it my friend uh brother Damien was converted by listening to uh, a program on youtube regularly Dina Nick and a few other people like that you know were converted through social media. So I think it's a good one. I don't know if you agree with me on that. <laughs> no, I, I agree with you that there's definitely, there's a lot of good that can be done from people mm. discovering the church and, and finding a place to worship and finding a place to learn the truth. And just, you know, through the videos or articles or things like that, where that are available online, where they can learn the truth that way. And there, we have an opportunity. And one of the things about social media that, when it started, people probably thought that, well, this is a fad. It's going to fizzle out and it's going to you know, go away, but it's not going away. And it's going to be here as long as as long as we're still using computers and 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 have access to electricity and all these things. The Internet and social media are going to be here and we need to know we need to recognize how we can take advantage of it to try to share the message of the gospel with the world around us. Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. So so that's 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 a good one. So this is something that we have got. And uh, apart from um, you know, the internet, I want to deviate a little bit. I also want to share one funny statement someone made the other day. Uh, I also go like you. I also print um tracts, uh, books, and I share. I I do share for free. I I you know because. You know, I've got some persons who just say, oh, you know, you can, you know, uh, print these and then share out. So someone once told me, he said, all of this sharing of tracts, they are not effective. People dump them in the in the in the trash and in the gutters and a gospel preacher, a young man for that matter. And then I was like, really? Well, you know. This is the reason is because they are used to a particular kind of like i said going to people's house and then knocking on people's doors um my dad shared the story of how he was converted i think he picked up a tract on on the floor the tract wasn't given to him probably given to someone else who dumped it and then he read it and then that got his attention so i think these are methods that people need to be exposed to and you know try to use them properly mm -hmm. yeah i think that's right did you think about the parable of the sower that he went out and he sowed the seed wherever it wherever it might fall. And sometimes it fell on on good soil representing good hearts, and sometimes it didn't. And a lot of times you might, you know, teach something, whether it's online or hand someone a track or knock on their door or whatever it might be. And a lot of times people are just not interested. But we need to recognize that there are going to be some people who are interested. And whether, you know, whatever method we're using, we can find people. We just have to be patient. We have to continue to plant the seed as, as we're told to do and, you know, trust that God's going to give the increase and just leave it, 
not think that it's in in our hands that we need to to make sure that well we have to do something to to make this happen no we just have to be faithful and we have to continue to spread the word in whatever way that is available to us mm, yeah that's that's right thank you thank you so much um i think that's one thing that um should i say the western world has actually gone far uh, above us and we are still far behind in all honesty and i think um it is something that we should we should um, uh be used to i was asking my friend pat donahue the other time i think a few days or a couple of days ago anyway on you know if you go to his website, he had a lot of uh, um, stuff on there. So I was asking, when did you begin this website? So he told me the year, I think far back in 2000, and, maybe 2000 or something. Wow. I said, at that time, I don't even have a mobile phone. I, the first time I used a mobile phone was in 2013. That was the first time I ever used a, a mobile phone. Now, far back in 2000, you see that he already has his website. He already has all of that. I don't know. I think you started yours in 2006, right? Or nine. Uh, 2005, yeah. Oh, five, six. Okay, so, okay, 2005. All right. So, you see, far back then, you have all of those stuff on the online and people can have access, but we don't have, we still depend on, you know, people coming to us one on one. Brethren came all the way from the US to teach us up till now. Brethren still come far from the United States to organize lectureship and all of that. But these are things we can actually do online, organize Zoom classes and lectureships, and then you get people to come and actually listen somebody can be in his house in in kentucky and then talk to a whole lot of people in nigeria and you know people can actually get you know access to that and through this medium i've actually reached out to people that i did not know uh, through my magazine a lot of people have actually read and written to me oh i think that was how i was able to get you as well and um mm -hmm. So it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Thank you so much, Brother Handy. That's all the questions I've got for you. But if you have anything else to say, you can actually close us out with that. Yeah, one, uh, one thing that I wanted to talk about is because there are people, as you mentioned at the beginning, who are hesitant to use social media. And a few years ago, you mentioned the article that I have on my website on on social media. That was actually part of a series of classes that I did at the church where I preach here. And uh, we did a one of the classes on social media. And I made the comment then because I mentioned the, the statistic that was current when I wrote that article and when I taught that class that about 80% of people in the U.S. are regular Facebook users. I don't know what the current statistic is, but it's probably somewhere around there where you have a large majority are using Facebook or some other type of social media, but not everyone uses it. And not everyone in the congregation that I was preaching in, or that I'm currently preaching in, not everyone there uses it. So what the one comment I made, and, and I try to I try to make this as as much as I, I believe that social media is can be used for good and we need to take advantage of it. If someone's not already using social media, I'm not going to try to argue that argue with them that they start. You know, if if they're not comfortable with it or for whatever reason they don't think it's, you know, that they would be able to use it effectively or that they see too much bad on it and and they don't want to use it, I'm not going to try to persuade them to start using it. But for those who are using it, and you're using it, I'm using it, and there are a lot of people, a lot of brethren in the church who are using it and doing so effectively, if we're using social media, I want to encourage all of us that are to make sure we're using it properly and using it for good, using it to spread the gospel, and avoiding using it in ways that detract from what we're trying to do to spread the gospel, that that kind of that make the church and make our brethren look bad by by getting into things that we don't need to be getting into we have an opportunity to spread the gospel and to make it available to people that we would never come in contact with that we would never meet in person now hopefully if we're teaching them the gospel eventually they would need to meet someone in person we can't baptize anyone through the internet you can't become part of a local congregation that meets online, that they have to be 
they have to obey the gospel. They have to be baptized into Christ. They have to become part of a local church. All of that is important. But we can help plant the seeds in the work that we're doing online. And so for those who are committed to doing this, I want to encourage everyone who is to keep at keep at the work that you're doing. Continue to do it. Don't be discouraged if you don't see results because a lot of times you mentioned people who learned the truth online and were converted. We may never know the people that we influence because we can reach people around the world. So don't be discouraged if you don't see the results that you are hoping to see. Continue to spread the gospel. Continue to do that. Use other ways too and do it in person and, and all that and where you are locally. But use this, this medium for good because there's a lot of good that can come from it. Thank you. Thank you so very much for that summary. Yeah, I think that's a lot of, that, that makes a lot of sense. You know, if a person is not having the good knowledge of how to use the social media, I think, and they are not willing to use it, I think it's best to stay away from it. Uh, we are not, the purpose of this program is not to convince people or make them to start using social media if they don't want to use in fact if you don't know how to use it you may fall into the hands of gullible people uh, people online if you are so gullible and then you might get you know you know maybe scammed or something like that and you might not use it properly so that that's that's a good point you made and uh, we are just saying that you know those who use them should you know uh be encouraged to continue and um, you know it's a way to add up to other um, ways of propagating the gospel like me i do a lot of apart from social media i do printing i go out from house to house preaching uh you know i also do personal uh communication with individuals uh you know discussing bibles with them a lot of other things like that so but that's it. That's it. These are ways to get people. The sh people should not be relaxed with just one particular traditional method of doing all of these things. In some places, you might not be allowed to even go publicly and use your uh, public speaker and then begin to to speak. Like in, in some parts of Lagos, you, can, you are not allowed to do that. There's a law prohibiting that for you to just go out there, put your speakers and then begin to speak such that others would be disturbed <laughs> so in such situation what happens to your method do you sit down at home or, or, and all of that so yeah thank you very much brother handy i think uh you you did very good and the pop points uh we want to bring out from the uh, message is being passed um any thank you for let me let me be on the show with you today and, and talk with you about this i enjoyed it all right i actually enjoyed it too and this was more uh it was more like a chat <laughs> that we had, and I think I like it too. Uh, thank you so very much. I hope to have you back here again. Uh, you know, any of my tough questions, I always like you to, to be the one to receive them, you and Patrick Donahue. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then, uh, you know, thank you always for um, honoring the invitation. Uh, I appreciate it greatly. I appreciate the invitation always. <laughs>